It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Need to you, me and this dude and sat and had conversations, not necessarily about what we were going to do, but just talking about all of the different things that we have done and how crazy it is and how amazing it is. And we see the success, like you've been around us for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like even I'm sure you seeing us as being people that can do what we did. I'm sure you looking like, man, these niggas is doing it. No, I think y'all doing. I don't even think y'all scratch the surface no, of where y'all going. Still. It is so crazy. I've always thought that y'all was the what's happening though. But I <laughs> mean, up. I I I've been such a huge fan of you guys for a while. I think like every once in a while, just randomly text Carlos and be like, bro. Seeing what's going on is just fucking nuts. Cause I'm on Instagram, so I'm just I'm seeing you guys go from like clubs to like theaters to these like massive fucking theaters. And then you were saying you guys just did the Apollo here in New York twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Two so, sold out shows. Now this I mean, is interesting to me because like back in the day, the idea would be here are these three southern guys, they're gonna be a southern act, we'll tour them around the south. And now with the internet and you guys have this massive success. You come up to New York, and then you sell out two shows at the Apollo. At the Apollo Theater. Yeah. And that's because funny is funny. You know what I'm saying? Are you saying? surprised like by that? Are you like, yo, these guys yeah, didn't even because, get us? Like, see, I always look at, I look at everything as a comedian first. Like, right. I feel like I got two careers. Like, my stand-up comedy career, it doesn't mix with my entertainer career. Right. Like, I <laughs> moonlight as a comedian at this point. Yeah, Because yeah. everybody take New York for a comedian? And this is where you, Mecca. this is yeah. like, this is like the final level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you come to New York to make sure everything works, yeah. like your timing is right. So it's like to come here and be embraced yeah. as a comedic star. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. See, I think man. the South is tougher. And the reason I think the South is tougher is because you can go down South and you can be the funniest motherfucker everywhere else. But then people down South be looking at you like, I don't get none of this shit he talking about. You know what I'm saying? And they'll oh, run you up that day. About think about comedy. what that shit they used to do in Atlanta, the chocolate Tuesdays. Not chocolate. Chalk. I mean, that's L.A. Tripping on Tuesdays. Tripping on Tuesdays. No, that's L.A. But see, this, well, the thing, Atlanta, this oh, is the yeah. thing yeah. about doing comedy in the South. This is the one thing people don't understand. It's like, you can have the best set ever. You can have the funniest material ever. But if you don't have that segment in your show to let people know, hey, I'm standing right here in front yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah, you just yeah, like yeah. you see me. This yeah. is off the script. This is off the cuff. Yeah. This is organic. I can do that also. If you don't give them that, they don't give a fuck what you do. Yeah, fuck like you, gotta, you have to acknowledge yeah, the crowd yeah, yeah. in the you South. Like, you just trying to sell me right. something. Yeah. You can't just walk out funny. and hit your script. You they want to know it's real. Yeah. They want to know you can do it organically exactly. and then, okay, you can do your jokes. And then you can do your jokes. Is, is that is that tricky for you guys when you guys do your stand-up specific dates? No, nope, because like, I'm not one of those comedians that's like die hard by the material. I'm not one of those yeah. ones like, oh, I didn't get to do my octopus joke. I give a fuck about that. <laughs> you know, like New York comics, they they are so like, ah, I didn't get to do my one. Mm -hmm. Like, who cares? Who cares? Right. And Question. it's not like it's not even about jokes with me. It's like, nigga, what can you do to entertain these people? Right. Can you give them a show? Right. Fuck the jokes. Fuck the set. What's your show look like? But that's where y'all best shit come from. Even when I, I've seen Chico in Philly and he start fucking with Gilly the Kid. Oh and my that shit will go viral. I see. You see, you got to keep in mind all of that type of shit. That's from coming to us being fans, bro. Like me and Chico, after the shows, people think we got all these hoes and shit. Man, we be kicking it, smoking a blunt, watching Wallow and Gilly the Kid. Like we, we still fans of motherfuckers. And you, you should always keep that energy. Right. Like I, I, I approach it the same way. I'm always a fan of the culture at the end of the exactly. day. Exactly. Is it weird when when you see the people that you idolize mm -hmm. like in your DMs? Yes. Or you tell, bro, every time like, Deion Sanders called me, I fucking so dropped my phone. Bro. Oh, shit, it's Deion. <laughs> <laughs> when was it? Well, it was, this is a month ago. Yeah. It was a, I think I'm just scrolling randomly on YouTube because you guys, your stuff populates my YouTube feed all right. the time. You know how like YouTube kind of like chooses yeah, the yeah, shit exactly. you like, right? And I see full. Dallas shows it. Was yeah. it, Dallas? it was like full Dallas show. You guys did like the actual show. You did kind of like doc with it. And then it was like featuring Deion Sanders. And I thought like he's going to bring you up or something like that. Or he just showed up. I'm like, how the fuck did they get Deion here? This motherfucker's on stage with them. Oh, Deion be in the hood with it now. That's Bro. what I'm saying. For real. Yeah. Dude, it's so how does crazy. his hair look? Does it look legit? Yeah. yeah. It's legit. Really? Man, it's, it's wild to me because it's like we had the meeting last year with fucking Revolt, right? Yeah. And we sitting there with Puff. 
And he's talking about his favorite moments from 85. This is yeah, shit we bro. never Just thought he would see. Like, right. Man, she was crazy. <laughs> when you was talking about your, uh, your slow cousin work at McDonald's. Chico, you losing weight, man. Yeah, What's man, up, bro? Bro, I'm fucking with you, man. You looking good. Like that. And he's hitting you with details like, 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 Did he tell you that you lost weight? Like, hey, you look, you look, you losing weight, man. Let me pour you another drink. man. That freaky shit, man. That man got niggas tied up in his basement. I know it. Did he like? Did he like? You like, Chico, you lose the weight. You another drink, man. Shout out to that guy. Got a whole gimp. Man, that shit terrified me back in the day. Bro, you gonna fuck the Revo money up? He gonna fuck up? Nah, I fuck with did. Did he hilarious, man? Listen, what did Dion call you and say, bro? I didn't want to say funny after that segue. I said hilarious. <laughs> no, it's cause like he'll he'll call me randomly and just be talking shit, and I'm like, man, I'm such a big fan. He'd be like, yeah, fuck all that. But did you see when wheelchair man jumped up out this wheelchair? Yeah. <laughs> like I, when we did the BT cipher, I looked at my at the comments on that you posted, yeah. and Bun B was like, man, Chico went crazy. Now I'm almost pissed on myself because it's like I love UGK. Like Hell that was one yeah. of the groups that I grew. Up. Even you know man. DC was so unique because we had our own music with the Go Go, but we were heavily influenced by Southern music, you know what I mean? And Bun B and Pimp C was like, I idolized them growing up. It was one of the few rap groups that I actually believed. You, you know got a Pimp C tone. I mean, but you got to play Pimp C in the movie, bro. You know what I mean? It was, it was, it was, one, he was just one of them people that I just looked up to and to see that and to see that acknowledgement is just like, wow. Like, Twister's another yeah. rapper. Like, I used to, be, get on punishment. My uncles would make me learn Twister verses and shit. Like nigga, know this by the time I get back home. Why? Bro, I met one of my. Oh, I met one of my OG OGs, bro. Who? Tone Loke. Tone oh, Wild Thing. Wow. Yeah. Funky Tone Medina. God damn. I was like, nigga, Tone Loke. He I came met to the Freddy Krueger, bro. Robert Robert England, the real Freddy Krueger. I know Freddy Krueger, yeah. the real and Freddy Krueger. We get Kruger. excited, about bro. The when I was at the meet, airport, I was too. like, nobody knew who he was. I was like. Just some random nigga. I was like, nigga, that's Freddy Krueger. He's like, man, bro, you tripping? We, remember we I'm like, man, that's him. Mall. And I was like, watch this. And I was like, bro, can I take a picture? And he was like, hell yeah. He was like, would you please just like do the Freddy Krueger voice? He was like, nah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and then, and then, the lady, then this lady was like, can you hurry up so we can get a picture? And he snapped and turned into Freddy Krueger. He was like, wait a minute, bitch. I'm like, yeah, yes, yes. yes. That was the coldest <laughs> shit, bro. Yeah, well, like, I, we, I love we, me, motherfuckers, man. man. And we be excited. Well, who was that we seen coming out the mall that day? Oh, the old school, um, the old school black dude, Howard Hewitt, Howard bro. Hewitt. Howard Hewitt? He was just outside, outside just on the phone. Where at? Oh, nigga, I don't even remember where we was at. Yeah, we was Charlotte somewhere, somewhere crazy. And he was just sitting outside the mall. Now, I met Project Pat in there. In Project Pat, man. Man. Man, I had to FaceTime this motherfucker. I'm in the airport. I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm Bro, Project FaceTime Pat don't have a bigger fan than me. Project Pat go hard. We was just talking about Project Pat last week because uh, didn't somebody call somebody a scallywag? Bro, please bring Project on Pat to the Breakfast shows? Club. I don't give a shit that he don't have nothing to promote, bro. Nah, we just need that for the that, internet. It, it, Pro Project Pat is a whole legend. That's why yeah. I like when I look at these motherfuckers now and they act like the the, the, the artists now are, are they ain't shit. Like, they used to look at Pat the same, the same way back way. in the day, but Pat was going platinum. Pat bro. was spitting, And had a too. fan base. Hell Pat yeah. Was There's still not a lot of rappers that can rap better than Juvenile. Come on, man. Juvenile, one of the Come coldest on, motherfuckers ever pick up a microphone. I want Juvenile to do CIAA next year. Come on, man. Then she got mad, call me bitches and motherfuckers. I waited till she got by the door, reached back and snuck her. She did like bro. any bitch would have did and, and got, got the, the law, law for me. me. Talking about going press charge and get up off of me. I told her when I get out of jail, I'm going to beat you off of I'm gonna beat you awfully. Oh, that was fucked up. That was before the Me Too time. Yeah, open up. Yeah, yeah, that, that was back in the day. Listen, that was back in the day. That they don't get the coming back with the lyrics. Like I'm a Tank fan. That nigga used to go hard in R&B <laughs> What Tank used to say? Man, listen, you don't remember? Maybe I deserve that At nigga the said, end? to grab your throat. Yeah, I mean, until you let me know. Yeah, listen that, to the, the end. title of that song is wild. That nigga Maybe said I to deserve. Grab my coat and chase you down the street, nigga. That nigga was going crazy. <laughs> what did that bitch do, Tank? You got to do a, a unsung on why. You wrote that song. What did she do to make you grab your coat? Because he knew he wasn't coming back in the house. Because you said you're chasing somebody. You don't think to grab your coat. you like, nah, I'm not stopping. I'm going to catch this I bitch. might be out Let here me, for a I while. Be right. out hey, while. you know why? You, what you, what Chico said some real shit, but you know why the Me Too Times Up movement or none of that shit will ever affect hip hop? Why is that? Because everybody loved a problematic hip hop song at mm -hmm. some point in their motherfucking life. Even Chris life. Rock made the joke about that shit. You remember that? He was uh -uh. talking about how women love the most misogynistic uh -uh. 
lyrics. Yeah, yeah, it could be a uh-uh. song called Slap It With The Dick. Slap It With oh, The yeah, Dick. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Hit that bitch with a back. Like, you gonna support <laughs> yes, that? Man. ain't talking about me. Yes. <laughs> At some point, you sang along the Snoop Dogg ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. Oh, you bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Yeah. I'm talking about women yeah, at some oh, point course. sang along and to Nate that Dogg shit. on the beginning of that song was so disrespectful. And if you can't fuck that day, baby, <laughs> just, just lay back and open your mouth. <laughs> Cause, Cause I, I have never, never met a girl. <laughs> and then my nigga Corrupt <laughs> come right behind him with some yeah. hard ass shit. Hard ass shit. shit. That shit I was so hard. Cool. Corrupt Give a fuck about a bitch. I never be broke. I never have no motherfucking endo to smoke. I get low and loony. Bitch, you can't do me. We look like BBD. You hoochie groupies. I got no love for hoes. That's something that I learned in the pounds. How the fuck am I supposed to pay this hoe? Just to lay this hoe. I know the pussy is mine, so I'ma fuck a couple more times. And then I'm through with it. There's nothing else to do with it. Pass it to the homie, now you hit it. Cause it ain't nothing but a bitch to me. And y'all know that bitches ain't shit to me. I give a fuck. Why don't you pay attention? Approach it with a different proposition. I'm corrupt. corrupt. Ho, you'll never, never be, be my, my only one. one. Strict ass, ass bitch. bitch. No fun. Well, how the about when, when Snoop no. Dogg said, I fucked on the floor so I would mess up the bed. Then little half dead put his dick, dick on her head. <laughs> Legendary and shit. And Snoop is a a family, a friendly, family friendly artist right now. Look, you can't, like you can't fault Lil Half Dead because he didn't say <laughs> he assaulted her or he disrespected her. All he did was lay his dick on her head. Right. She could have been like, quit playing so much, Half Dead. Get your dick off my head. We don't play like that. That's, that's but why, she, it was not, never no anger. That's why I wish Pimp C would have stayed alive, man. Pimp C, I don't Pimp know if there was a joking dick on the right head now, or what. Man. Man. You know what I mean? You think Pimp C would have been doing commercials? Pimp C would have been doing commercials if the pimp was still alive. What kind of commercials? Just, any type of commercial. State Farm, all that shit. Are you in good hands, bitch? Like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 